Okay, concerned citizen said we, uh, we were not uh, recording the lesson. Uh huh. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can. Where are the other five people? Where have they gone? They are still joining. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, so we have seen how this reactivity series is now. Lithium is not here. Lithium is not here. Lithium has also it is own funny characters that it doesn't react as fast as it should be because of the closeness of the last electron to the what to the nucleus so there is that strong push factor in between them that uh, electron is being highly attached to to the nucleus so it cannot be lost anyhow or freely like that so you find that calcium calcium outweighs it in the reaction done itself so that's why they have removed it from here and it's not there they put potassium sodium calcium magnesium okay so you have gotten the reason yes because somebody was about to ask why isn't lithium here eh? wasn't somebody about to ask Yes, teacher. Oh, you had forgotten that one. <laughs> so yeah. lithium, it is it is electron. That last electron is strongly bound or strongly attached to the to the nucleus. So it is it is not more reactive than this. So you find calcium uh, displacing it from this reaction faster than any other thing. So the calcium now takes over lithium because lithium, the last electron is strongly bound by that nucleus pull factor okay so yes. there's the strong bond between the nucleus and that electron doesn't allow the electron to move easily yeah? while this one of calcium will jump off very fast and leaves it there so that's why it's not here you find sodium potassium calcium magnesium aluminium and the way they go now when you come to this hydrogen hydrogen in the reactivity series you find the copper this this now when you come to group two group two elements here there are also those ones that are more than calcium somewhere we have looked at the big periodic table the way it is so you don't need to get stuck to your head that the most reactive metal in group two is calcium no there are others that are better than calcium down there so when you are given to arrange them, make sure you know they might even increase these periods to about six, five and six. Then they put a metal down, then they put another one somewhere. So you must be positioned to jumbo it out and get to know. Now, if something has one electron, something has two, something has three, the one that has one feels better to lose it very fast and it becomes a free element like these ones. Agony neon and helium those ones that have two they have to first throw one then again they throw the other one so they take they, they react slowly while those ones of three they have to first take one then they again another one like that so you find it reacting slowly than these ones of group one and two meanwhile the first reactive elements are in group one followed by those ones in group two followed by those ones in group three and then they say here down the trend reactivity increases as you go down the group. So that is because of the increase in atomic radius. So uh, while what happens to metals, non-metals? So here they are Again. saying, uh, as you go down the group of non-metals, reactivity decreases. Reactivity does what? Decreases. It decreases. decreases for metals it increases as you go down that is metals it increases increases for nanometers it decreases so the most reactive nanometer is where up which is what because we have seen the same way metals behave those ones that have one to lose they lose it faster. Even nanometers, the same way, those ones that have one, 
have the ability and the potential to pull electrons faster than those ones that need to. Okay? So the most reactive nonmetals are those ones of group seven. Group what? Group seven. Because they lack only one to be full. So they will pull that one very fast from any element and they become satisfied. Okay? So the first reactive nonmetal is fluorine. As we go down, what's the next one? Glo? Lorraine, then we go to hmm? that is where we stop. Yes. There are many others, even bromine is here, even iodine is here, then the last one is astatine. Astatine, like this. So you find that in group seven, you're also going to look at their trend to which they be they react. The first reactive nanometer is here, followed by this. If these ones get over, you go to the next nanometer like that, and it continues. Is that clear? So yes. the reason is the reason is the first one is this. It is lacking one to be full, and the atomic radius is, is small. Now, if the the, the 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 center or the forces in the center here in the nucleus are close to the one that needs one in the outermost electron here here now you find that the force here is strongly attracting this electron inwards so whatever this thing does it is also to look for another electron that is that it needs to be full so it pulls that thing very fast because of the strong force of attraction now here this one is lost because of the weak forces of attraction between the nucleus and the, the last electron this one it's because of strong force of attraction between this and that so if you are told to explain you can now secure your marks so finally here they are saying across the period from left to right across the period from left to right that is now in the periods reactivity from group one to group seven it decreases from group one to group seven meaning most reactive elements in the table is group one and then group seven so reactivity decreases as you go from one metallic side to a non-metallic side because on the right left hand side we see nanometers then on the right hand side we see uh, on the on the left on the left we see metals then on the right we see none none metals so it, reactivity decreases so as you go from left to right reactivity decreases so the most reactive are found on the left hand side then the least reactive are on the right hand side okay yes okay so that is what happens there so these ions we shall come back and look at them um, let me go to page 82 if you have the book you turn to page 82 that's where we are going to based on today's discussion mostly page 82 those who don't have the book make sure you download it it is in our study material so here we have a name that we put up there it's called chemical family chemical family Style, it is like your family chemical family where you belong so here they are saying elements in the same group uh, someone is shouting from the group who is that one hmm? savior you are the one wow so they say elements in the same group if you are in the same group then you belong to the same same what chemical family chemical family so in the same group elements in the same group are referred to as chemical families because of the family similarity in the chemical and physical reactions we have the chemical and the physical 
physical reactions. These are the things that separate these two or three things because of the chemical and physical reactions. So chemically, if you belong to group one, you are supposed to lose only one electron. If you belong to group two, you are supposed to lo lose what? Two. That's why they say their, reac uh, their reactions are the same. So let's look at this. These elements in the same group have the same chemical properties because they have the same number of electrons in the outermost energy level. The common chemical families are one. You take note of those names. Alkaline, alkaline metals. Then we have two alkaline earth metals. Earth metals. Then three, we have another name called ha halogens. Then fourth, we have the noble gases. gases. Now alkaline earth, uh, metals, alkaline metals are those of group one. Group one. Alkaline earth metals, they are those ones that are found on earth. They are found on earth. They are called group two elements. Then the halogens are of which group? Group seven. 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 Noble seven. gases are of which group? Eight. Group eight. eight. So in our study, we are going to look at group one, two, seven, and then finally eight. Eight has no common things. They don't react. For them, they are okay. They are what we call a stable state. They're in a stable state. So let's look at one alkaline metals. These are elements of the of group one. These are elements of group one in the periodic table. Mm. This is where they belong. So these metals are very reactive and are kept under oil in the lab. Uh, we watched a video one day, that's why they, care, they are kept under the lab. Just a minor exposure to air, they can even cause an explosion. So where they have no contact with the water or air, that's why they should be kept in oil. Okay? Mm. Okay. So that is why they are kept under oil. Because once they come into contact with water and the air, uh, let me just give you a view of what happens to magnesium. Actually, let me look at the potassium or sodium. Mm. Potassium in water. Mm, this is our simple video of what happens when you put potassium metal in water. So reaction of potassium and the water. The network is just delaying us. So it is under group one. We have just looked at it. Do you see where it is kept? Yes. It is kept in a closed oh, bottle. Yeah. Why do they close the bottle to avoid air entry? They put mm -hmm. it in the bottle to avoid air entry. Then second, they put it under oil. Also to do the same thing, to prevent any extra or whatever air has escaped inside from reacting with this metal. This one, I think they have removed it several times. That's why the oil has reduced. But always this oil is supposed to cover the whole metal. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's look carefully. So is removing the metal. You see the way it looks like. 
Yes. Now, this one is very, very soft. You are going to look at the physical properties of group one. You will find that all group one metals are very soft. They are not hard like uh, iron, uh, zinc. They are very soft. Even you can cut with a minor knife. Okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, what you're saying is if we get down the table, the our periodic table, group one metals tend to become more soft and softer. Those ones down there are very soft than those ones, the ones up. I told you what causes that. The bond, the forces of those bonding forces between the nucleus and the outer electrons causes the softness. So when you cut it, the shiny surface appears. That is what it, what happens there when you cut it. So in simple terms, all these metals have a shiny surface. Only that outside here, uh, the shape to which it was made has made it to grow old like that. But when you cut, it must be shiny. You see the way he has compressed it easily, even with the minor hand you press, it goes off. But, but to make a mistake and put it in water, that's when you'll know. So he's trying to check if it is a metal, then the mass impulsion to conduct electricity. Now, these are the two coils. If you join them together, there is a battery here. These are the two wires. So if you link them inside this metal, this bulb must be positioned to light because it's a property of metals. Metals conduct what? Electricity. Electricity. Thank you. Hmm. So he's adding a piece of this in water. You observe what happens. You see what happens to it in less than seconds, it has disappeared. Now that is a small piece. Just imagine you have put a bigger piece. What would happen? By mistake, it will even crack this and it goes far. And if it goes into your eye, I don't know the way you remove it. So that is a simple video for that. So we go back to our point of discussions, saying that eh, these are elements. So this is what they are saying here, that eh, these are group one metals in the predictable. The, these metals are very reactive and are kept under oil in the lab where they have no contact with air and water. They include lithium, sodium, potassium. As we looked at them, there are many down there. Not only they don't stop here, but at this level, this is where we stop. Atoms of these elements each have a single electron out on the outermost electron. Each has one electron on the outer electron shell, which is easily lost during a chemical reaction, leaving a single positively charged ion. So this is what happens. When potassium reacts, it loses that one electron. This, it loses that electron to become, to, to become an ion. This is what happens with sodium when it loses the electron to become the ion. Potassium becomes the ion and loss of electron in the reaction. So physical properties, we have seen these metals are very soft and we can be cut with a knife. The softness decreases as you go down the group. They are melting and boiling okay. points are low. Yeah. Um, so that is what is there. They are saying they are melting and boiling points are low. The melting point decreases down the group as we have seen the softness. So when you go down, the melting point decreases because of that softness. They have very low density and can float on water. We have seen when you put it in water, it remains on top. It doesn't sink. 
so here it is in simple terms it is it is less dense than water they have a shiny surface when cut that one you have seen uh, the shiny surface soon tarnishes if you leave it there it will tarnish due to the reaction with oxygen to form the oxides they are good conducts of heat and electricity that one you have seen they do not possess tensile strength uh tensile strength is, is uh, when you go to physics senior three where are you mm -hmm. tensile strength they don't possess tensile strength to any appreciable extent that's why they easily go into water because they, that uh, whatever like uh, if you go to group two group two have uh, more tensile strengths that means they have extra energy they react their reactions are always hard huh? they are hard they, they, they are stronger than those ones of group one so here they're saying chemical properties reactivity of the alkaline earth metals increases down to the down the group due to the increase in atomic size potassium is more reactive followed by sodium and lithium is the least reactive in the group uh, then one let's look at reactions with the water all of them when you dissolve in the water they form hydroxides potassium hydroxide and hydrogen gas we saw when that metal was in the water there was some gas given off isn't it Hmm? when the metal was burning yeah, yeah. some gas was given off that gas is the hydrogen hydrogen gas yes. okay so you form the hydroxide bit of it i told you if you write potassium hydroxide wrongly the equation will never balance so potassium has valence one hydroxide also is a radical it has valence one so they form potassium hydroxide that's what happens sodium hydroxide also the same way and hydrogen gas now lithium also it forms the same thing because of that uh, property of having one electrons outermost now there is a behavior of these two reacting and this is a common question they like confusing you sodium reacts with the excess and then little air the rest when they burn in air they form oxides potassium oxide but sodium has a behavior sodium burns in the air with a bright yellow flame forming yellow solids of sodium peroxide in plenty of air that's when air is too much but if air is limited in limited air sodium forms a white solid of sodium oxide now a question will come from nowhere they say sodium reacts with excess air yes. write the equation of reaction you must in position tell us that is a peroxide that's from sodium peroxide not sodium oxide is that clear yes okay now this reaction is funny you are going to find also in a group two there's some reaction there in group two it has some funny reactions also so we have seen in group one with the water everything is hydroxide and hydrogen gas with the group with the air we form oxides except sodium that has two two reactions if air is excess it gives you a peroxide if it is limited or less it gives you the oxide so reaction with chlorine all of them give chlorides that one is known reaction with acids all of them have ability of displacing the acid the h from the acid and they give you salt and hydrogen gas because they are more reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series are we contented with the group one emitters hmm? yes, are we teacher. contented vanita Vanita, yes, teacher. you are contented with the group one metals? Yes. Okay. Thank you for being good students. Let's look at two. 
alkali earth metals. We, told, we said alkali earth metals are found in group what? These are group two elements in the periodic table. They include beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. As you go down, there are many metals down there. These metals have two electrons on the outermost shell. They have two electrons. I told you how to draw those two when you are told to react to them. The two last electrons must be one here, one here, or one here, one there. That's when they, they will react out. We shall also see those reasons when you go back to bonding. And if you draw them lousily, you will not form any bond. So that is what they do. So the other one who lost one here you see they are losing two electrons and the magnesium is two plus two plus all of them two plus so these 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 are elements in a group two and that's what they do and uh, they react by losing two electrons and that's what happens physical properties they are harder than group one metals good conducts of electricity and heat the surface still remains uh, silver silver silvery gray in color like the other one uh, their melting points and boiling points are higher than those of group one that's why they have uh, some good tessile what strength here because they are stronger than those of group one and that's why their reactions are always high and hard metals of group one are very easy to cut these ones they are very hard uh chemical reactions if you look at uh, with the air now take note of this the time you looked at air in group one sodium gives two things we form a peroxide sodium peroxide and then sodium oxide this is limited limited this is excess now let's look at group two with air metals the metals burn in air with a characteristics flame forming oxides of a metal magnesium burns with a brilliant blue flame forming white ash which is this now all of them form oxides now both metals also form nitrides they form nitrides especially if the supply of oxygen is The supply of oxygen limited. is what is limited is limited now they will ask you that question that uh, what happens when you when you put these metals when uh, there is a limited supply of oxygen what happens now if air supply is limited magnesium and calcium will not grab oxygen they will grab the nitrogen which has high percentage in air they will grab the what the nitrogen and this one will form magnesium what magnesium nine nitride then this one also will form calcium nine nitride you remember nitride in in radicals it is that this nh3 minus it is in it has valence three so when it reacts with this, magnesium has two electrons. The nitride has three negative. So this one comes here, then this one gives that side. So you form magnesium three and two. When you try to balance, magnesiums are three, nitrogens are two, meaning the equation will balance automatically. Even this one, it will balance automatically. Is that okay? Now, if when these nitrides dissolve in the water and all these are white, 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 uh, they are white in the color, they are white solids. Now, if these nitrides are dissolved in water and the solution warmed, ammonia gas is liberated and the alkaline solution is formed. That alkaline solution is magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and ammonia, ammonia gas. So when you dissolve these nitrates, magnesium nitrate in, in water, the end product is magnesium hydroxide, meaning the two here is for magnesium hydroxide has nothing, it has one, plus ammonia gas. 
the next is balancing look for ways of balancing it here it is balanced but when you write it you must be pushing to balance yours also okay both of them do the same things so when you come to reactions with water all of them give now magnesium beryllium does not react with the water magnesium pieces react very slowly with the cold water so magnesium reacts highly with steam but with the cold water it gives magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen gas the reaction is too slow but if you want magnesium to react you give it steam that is water that's the water you heat and then pass it over magnesium it will give you an oxide magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas so you take note of those conditions they might tell you to write the equation of reaction between magnesium and water in a liquid state. Then there's magnesium and water in a gaseous state. Then you'll form an oxide. For you, write hydroxide, the equation will be wrong. And that's how equations become very tricky. So here we have uh, calcium reacts steadily with the water, evolving hydrogen gas and calcium hydroxide. So uh, calcium and water, it gives calcium hydroxide and water, except magnesium only. Beryllium, no reaction with the water. So magnesium reacts with twice. Water in liquid state, water in a gaseous state. The reaction with the liquid state is too slow. It gives an hydroxide and hydrogen gas, while this one gives us the oxide. When it comes to chlorine, all of them give chlorides. Uh, when you come to acids, they react steadily with acids, giving us the aqueous solutions. Uh, magnesium sulfate or magnesium chloride, and then the gas is given off. That is where we have stopped for today. Any question that you have that is burning you, that is doing what, you are free to ask. We don't have questions. Teacher, mm. when magnesium reacts with mm -hmm. water, either in gas or liquid, mm. the main the, the residue is the residue what hydrogen gas. That's not a residue because if the gas evaporates, eh. we don't have a residue. We form eh. all soluble salts. Do, do we form hydrogen gas? Yes, at the end yes. of the day, all of them give hydrogen gas. You see okay. this? Yeah. But uh, in a water in a liquid state, it gives us the hydroxide of magnesium, not the oxide with the steam. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teacher? Yes. You say that the, this part of nitrates, mm. the, the group two metals that they form nitrate, they form nitrates, nitrates in limited, yes, mm. in limited supply of oxygen. Mm. Then you say something about N, NH3 and N negative three also, something like that. NH negative three? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was showing you how magnesium nitride is formed. Mm. A nitride is here. It is N negative three. That's a nitride ion. Okay. Yes. Then magnesium is Mg. It is ion state is two plus. Okay. So mm. when they form a compound yes. called magnesium nitride, the three here goes to magnesium. Then the two goes to nitride, isn't it? Yes. So we form something close to this. Magnesium 3, N2. That is our compound. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Now, if you dissolve this nitride in water, the end product is magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and ammonia gas. Okay? Yes. Then the rest will be balancing. Ah, those are good questions. Uh -huh. Where, where are they? Where are they? Epidu. 
Who is the pedo? Uh huh. Yes. Uh, I'm waiting for questions, please. Vanita, prepare my question. Huh? Teacher, question. Yes. You say that group one elements are solved. So yeah. That means um, when as you go on to the next elements, they become harder and harder. Which one? Group one elements. Uh, from group two to eight. Group two to eight. Uh, actually, most metals from group one. Group one are soft. Group two are hard. Group three become harder. Now, group three, that's where our metals stop. They don't go beyond four. Is that clear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm So if that is if that is fine, then now equations is a part of you. If, if you have to write equations in chemistry, then uh, we have nothing to do for you at this level. If you fear equations, make sure you have bundles of equations to write. Then we shall look at uh, halogens. Uh, next time we start, and then halogens have some funny reactions. This one will give us where our jig is formed from. What is the active reagent in the jig, and uh, that bleaching action it poses on clothes when you are washing. Uh, also, bromine to behaves the same way. It is reaction with other metals like that. Then finally, we come to noble gases. After that, we go back and finish up the periodic table up this side with the reactions involved in the periodic table inside and how compounds are formed. So if you another have any other thing to talk about, you say it now, otherwise we have less than 30 seconds to close the session. Hmm? Okay, if there is none, uh, allow me wish you the best of the day. Senior theories we meet later on. Thank you for attending. And, hey, Patricia.